Hello and welcome to Comfy Cozy Up. So today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. So yeah, summer's over. I'm happy about it. The heat is still here. The summer is pretty much done. So for the month of August, I read eight books and they were all over the place, which I'm, I'm really happy about because I was, you know, previously under this contemporary romance kick and this is a mixture of everything and so I had a really um, good reading month and I've, I'm thinking I'm up to about 54 books and of them I think five total that I gave five stars and of the five two of them were this month so that should tell you that I enjoyed the books that I read this month so the first book I started off with was Me You Everything by Katherine Isaac and I um First, I wasn't sure what this book was about in terms of the storyline, but I was still intrigued when I picked it up. And um, because it had some form of like um, summer vibes to it. And this is a story that is a bit sad. It's, it's a story that has um, a woman and her son, and for her mother's dying wish, she wanted them to reconnect with the, the, the boy's father. So, in her attempt, to satisfy her mother's need um, and her mother's, I mean, her mother's wishes, she went to visit her um, estranged ex. And in that, you find out there's more to why she went there in the first place besides just her mother um, uh, making her mother happy. Um, so it was a lot of sad stuff in this, but it, it's not um, as exciting. It's more of a, a kind of like a slow journey of this um, family and all the stuff that they have to deal with and I I liked it but it wasn't I wasn't like blown by the storyline it was more of a um like wow like it, it, it makes me think of certain things that um that happened in this but um but I it was more of a, a in the middle road for me it wasn't over the top but it still was a um a, a, a nice story in terms of um, what was going on in the book. So then I wanted a little bit of excitement. So I picked up the third in the um, Morgan Dane series, which is her last goodbye. And this is by Melinda Lee. And I read the first one, I believe either the early this year or maybe the end of last year. And I like it. It's a lawyer, female lawyer, and the man is a detective. And they um, each, um, book is a different case so I, th I think you still need to read them in order I'm only in the second one but it's five book in a series however um, I think if you were to put them out in order it wouldn't be a, um, the end of the world because the way the stories are they're totally different cases that they're dealing with in each book but I like this one better than the first I thought this one was very much um, had the suspense had a um, a lot of um, secrets where they had digging. I didn't expect the ending at all. It was just totally not what I was expecting. And I like that when you have in the um, in crime series, and it's maybe a series with lawyers. I think they're always interested to me. Um, but I would say I'm definitely going to continue with the series. I really want to get to all five, and I'm probably going to each month read one until uh, I'm finished with the series. So yeah, I was all for it. Then I wanted a romance. So I picked up Unblocked by um, Marnie Mann. Yeah. And um never heard of her. So I was hoping for um, a discovery of an author that is fairly new to me. And um, so I picked up a series. And it's actually a long series. And that's the problem I had with the series. It's just too long. It was, I believe, four or five in the series. I read it on my Kindle. So... I just was like, okay, we get to the end. It was just a lot of unnecessary sexual moments in this book. It was just like, I'm mad at you, sex. You happy, sex. Oh, something bad happened today, sex. <laughs> it was just unnecessary. Yes, it's supposed to be a little erotic, but it was just like over the top, unnecessary. So. I was, even though I like the story in terms of the actual storyline, these other unnecessary things that they put in there just took away from what would have been to me a really good, interesting story. The characters were nice. I, I didn't actually had any like 
I wasn't annoyed by any of the character. I actually thought the the guy was kind of you know had that little you know alpha male personality, and the female she was, um, you know, a boss lady. You know, she she was a businesswoman. You know, so I like that. But ugh, all these extra ugh, no. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, I'm gonna get me some. Marlon James. So I picked up the very last book that I that I haven't read from him, and you know John Crow's Devil, but you know Jamaica was a John Crow. So I was just like, did this man just lost his damn mind with this book? Because this is some church folks madness. But I loved it. I love everything about it. It was just think of this this over the top drama with. Um, good and evil is you know where you have two leaders of the church one a former one current and one a, a bit possessed by the devil one might be the devil himself and these this community is so wrapped up in the church that they're easily influenced by each each man and some you know you you're not sure who was actually good in the beginning and who was bad but as the story goes on, you know you you know clearly who is you know the devil's child <laughs> in this, and you're just like wondering how are these people just getting so sucked in and manipulated by what was going on in this church. But the writing, this it just made me feel like this man probably grew up in some Pentecostal church somewhere in Jamaica and thought about all these things, crazy ideas in his head to come up with this story because. I was just like, what? <laughs> but it was so intriguing. Like, I kept on reading it. Even towards the end, there's, like, this thing that happened where you're like, wow. You just had to, like, sit back a little, like, that's some deep church mess. <laughs> but I loved it. I would definitely... Marlon James can't do no wrong right now. I mean, I have yet to be disappointed. I, I mean, I can't... I can't even complain. This is, it, it, I, w I wouldn't say it was a five star to me. It was more like a four, maybe four and a half. Um, but in, you know, but in, in general, like as a, as an author and all the, f the books I've read from him, I, I am completely a huge fan and I think he is brilliant. He's daring. None of his stories are alike because this is nothing like the previous ones. But he is so, he knows how to describe things in a way where you just, you can really imagine what he's talking about. And I'm like, wow, yes, I'm all for this. Then I got back on the romance trail and I picked up The Naked Truth by Vicky Lynn. And I was like, yes, all right. And then there's certain things that she did again that I feel like it's becoming a trend in her latest books and... Um, just a little bit. I was a little annoyed because I love the characters. I absolutely love the characters in this book. And you know, you have a story with a lawyer who is did something where she part of her punishment was community service, but it was to go to prison and do community service there for what she did. And she met a, a, a one of the prisoners there, and he was wrongfully accused of a crime, but he's there. And they bonded and somehow sparked. But it wasn't what she expected. And then something happened where she removed herself from the situation. Three years later, he come out. He wanted to find her. So he did what he could and find her. He's also wealthy. So, of course, he knew how to use his power and his money to be able to get close to her. And you're finding out what happened to him, why he went to jail, the storyline. And then they have to throw something in there where she constantly doing her latest books where I'm like really this is like the best cliffhanger you could come up with to suck your audience <laughs> it just was just I, I it just made the story like water down after that after that I was just kind of like reading and just trying to finish the book because and this was like 60% in a book so 60% of the book I was all for it I was like yes and then like towards the next you know I'm just like really no so the next book I picked up was my actual first five star um, for the month and that was what it means when a man fall from the sky and that is Leslie Nika Arima and oh, this this is like a perfect collection of short stories
story. I haven't read a short story in a long time since uh, one of Jay California Cooper's book, which I think I have back here, which is Home, Homemade Love, and where I love all the stories. Like, I find something interesting in all the story. This is an author that is, like, infused her, her Nigerian roots, you know, her Ibu tribe culture in the book. and But she found ways where some stories are very realistic, and then some story has this metaphor where you're supposed to take something from it. There's a bit of loss. There's a bit of love, longing, um, family um, obligation, family curse in a way where you, you know, where she's entangled in the stories. And I found myself at, in the beginning was just like, whoa, the first story. And then, you know, as it progressed, I'm like, Wow, I, I like this one too. Oh, I like this one too. It was just none. I, I, it's a long time I've had where I've read a collection of short story where I enjoy every single one of the stories. I think this is a very good short story collection. I highly recommend it. It is definitely a five star for me, and yeah, I was for it. Then the next book was the first book off the Man Booker um, long list this year, and it's from a low and quiet sea. At first, when I picked this up, it sucked me in, I, in the beginning. The writing, hands down, I love the writing. Um, but then I thought, is this a Marvel or is this a, a, a short story collection? Because it's, it's a three men, and they separate them in sections. So it started off with one man who was um, a refugee, and you hear about his story and what happened to him and his family. And then they keep on, with this, get to the second guy who's more of a... <sighs> the second guy was just an interesting case. And you have a, 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 another guy who is, you know, has this um, conflict of... Um, uh, where he, you know, religious, where he lost his faith, he lost his family um, saga and things that was going on. And I'm reading these, I'm like, how are these connected? But it's, but when you get to the, towards the last part of the book, you start putting two and three together where you're thinking, how did I miss that? You know, how did I miss this? And, and then I'm like, okay, you know, it, but it's, he was clever. This author was clever. It's a whole different way to me. It's not a typical way of, of to me, of the novels I've read the, um, recently. This is just definitely a different um, writing style. And I really enjoyed this. I, I thought this was um, very interesting. And it's short. It's only like 174 pages. But it's packed with a lot. There's a lot of sadness in this as well. So it's not a happy book. Um, because they're dealing with a lot of loss, a lot of tragedy. And... Um, but they they're living and um and they somewhat have moments where they they hold on to these stories that has um somewhat helped them move on with life or not necessarily be better but cope and these stories are to me are very interesting and um and very um important in the, in the book but yeah this was definitely um not what I expected but it's good and then, of course, uh, yeah, this book. The Seven Husband of Evelyn Hugo. And I, I'm still completely at awe with this book. This book was amazing. This is my five star again, another the second five star. This book is definitely one of my favorite book of the year. I am in love with this story. This is a story about a Hollywood star. She's now in her late 70s and she decided to, she wanted to finally tell her story. She was very much secret. A lot of people never got an interview from her. She selected this woman and in the beginning you're wondering why was this woman particular was um selected and you don't know until the, the i mean absolute very end why she was selected as the person that was going to write her autobiography so i it, it took me on a journey you get to know why each husband was there why she married what her um her true love was um, what was going on in a time period because it's a historic fiction, so it's dating back to I believe the, the maybe the late 40s, 
Um, most of the story is that marriages were in the, the, the 50s and 60s. And you get to know why each husband had a purpose in her life and what their, um, how they uh, influenced her in certain things that she did. And, um, but it was just unbelievable journey with this book. I loved the, the, the main character. I thought she was um, this, you know, old bossy know what i want kind of woman she gave me like the vibe of like the sex appeal of a marilyn um, monroe with a little bit of a you know size from elizabeth taylor so it's just she had that present about her and the way they describe her you you felt that she was that striking um hollywood star and i felt also for the writer you know the report she was just there and um and how she was influenced and and, and that's another thing about this book too it was inspirational there were things that were said in this book where i feel like you know it made me like yes live your life and you know live with the choices that you made whether they were good or bad um there's you know that message in there but it's just this book was i'm 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 loving it <laughs> this is another one where i feel like you should read it is it touches on things that I think are going to be uncomfortable for some people. To, but at, at, for that time period, you also feel that sadness because, you know, you, where you had to choose who you, who you love and um, who would be expect, like, um, acceptable, especially when you're in the public eye. Um, so, yeah. 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 This one is good. <laughs> so with that said, that is all the books that I read this month. And um, let me know, what is one of your favorite books that you've read so far this year? Like, what is that one or a few five-star read that you still smile about, leave you in awe, made you think, make you feel a certain way? Put that in the description because I want, I'm all about reading those books that I feel like people connect to and um, give that strong Vibes, whether it is is it makes you leave you in shock or whether it's just something that makes you smile this leave in the description bar I'm, I'm all for those five star reads that feel good five star read and you know that's it guys um thanks for watching and you know have a good day bye